And welcome back to AgriTalk. We're in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, the National Farm City Council Symposium, Agriculture, a Growing Story. Well, I think we pretty well lined out the challenges that we face in agriculture in telling that story, but we're also trying to show you and, and, and let you know there are ways that you can get that message out. I think we're all frustrated when we see a piece on the evening news or there's something in a major magazine that we feel is misleading or inaccurate, and if... Um, a story like an undercover video comes out, that may be the, and we believe it is, the exception to the rule, but the exception gets so much of the coverage, so much of the attention that it, it forms consumers' opinions and shapes their minds. That, that's really what we're talking about here. Agriculture is being defined by outside forces, and agriculture has to step up and define itself and let people know uh, who they really are. I want to bring in Charlene Shoup Espenshade again, the special editor for Lancaster Farming, a special uh, a, a, as I said, the special sections editor for the newspaper that's widely circulated in the eastern United States. Charlene, being in this part of the country, now, here we are in, in Pennsylvania. A lot of people in the Midwest may not even realize this is really an agricultural area, but you don't have to go far to get into very urban areas. How does this message resonate with those urban uh, readers that you have? Actually, that's probably one of the interesting things we have discovered. We do have, um, actually, I have someone that's married to a cousin of mine, and their parents read our paper, and they have nothing to do with agriculture, but they, I mean, nothing. And I asked, why do you read us? Well, we're just so fascinated about what's going on. And someday we're going to own a farm. And I think that makes it interesting is we do have that romance out there. There are people who really do want to farm and they do see these farms. It does come with its issues. I know Chris can relate to that is we've, as when you have the urban population living right next to the farm, it does bring in some quirks. And I would say here in Eastern United States, we, a lot of our farms are working to become more aggressive in telling their story, but there's more they should be doing, such as a, with a traditional media background, engage in Letter City Editor. And, for example, our newspaper has our own online media discussion points. Get engaged because that's so important. And, Chuck, that's what we're asking uh, those in the ag community to do as far as using social media. Get engaged. Don't let others tell your story. You can tell it yourself. Yeah, it's not just a one-way communication tool we're talking about here, but two-way. It's a conversation. And, you know, looking for resources, if, if people have questions, uh, we've mentioned the AgChat Foundation. You can go to agchat.org. There is a growing amount of information being put there. Uh, the purpose was to essentially create a sort of a I will call it a pretty informal organization here, a structure where there's no staff here. These are all volunteers, most of whom are farmers. I'm actually one of the only board members who's not a, 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 a producing farmer right now. But, um, but there are tools to help you better understand how to do this, how to um, uh, keep that conversation going. There are things like sort of best practices when it comes to even just Twitter. What's the best way to reply to what somebody says? And you know, I love hearing the word transparency because to me, this is the key to what makes this successful is being open, honest, and transparent in every bit of communications we do and not be ashamed that Somebody doesn't like it. I mean, that's going to happen. I don't care what business or industry you're in. So, um, you know, look at those things. Look to your local farm organizations if you want and ask, say, hey, do you have any resources for me? I want to get started to do this. I'm sure you'll find plenty of help. Chris, it is tough. You alluded to this earlier. Sometimes it's tough for us to tell our story because even though you're doing everything right, there are things on a farm that for people just watching – that, uh, wow, they, they may, you, you're worried about what kind of reaction they'll have to it. But, I mean, you still have to just explain, this is what it takes for food to get to your table. This is where it starts. That's right. And we live in a society where they can't differentiate between companion animals and livestock. And, and because of that separation, that's why it's hard. But we have to understand and, and, you know, try, the wording you use, try not to use your industry's terms. You know, don't talk about spent hens and don't talk about layer house. Talk about the barn and maybe ends at the hens at the end of life. But And you figure out in what scale you're working in agriculture. Use the words that they can understand, and then they'll respect that more. But, um, again, you have to help them understand that 
bacon does come from a hog that's been killed. And it's okay, but the, the, the hog's been raised humanely. It's been slaughtered humanely. You have to give them so much reassurance. And, and, the, and that's the point that a consumer wants to know. They want to know you're caring for the animal and you're producing it in a safe method so that they don't have any risk to their family. So you're encouraging poultry producers to get engaged in yes. this conversation. Absolutely. And, Gene, back to you. It's important for the consumer, too. We need to encourage them to ask those questions and, and to find out, not just assume based on what they're hearing on headlines or seeing in a newspaper headline just can be very misleading. Dig in. Find some facts out. Absolutely. It's only going to benefit you the more you know. Mm-hmm. You really have to check it out. So that's kind of our message here. And, and Chuck, uh, just wrapping up with you, if you were, if someone was wondering, how do I tell my story what would you suggest? What would be the way for them to go about getting started? Uh, well, again, there's there's a lot of choices out there, but just pick one and get started. It's it's really easy to create a Facebook profile or a Twitter account. Start it and just follow some other people and just watch. You don't have to just think I got to start writing these either short, uh, significant phrases or maybe a, a whole uh, blog post, for example, but. If you start watching and learning, I think that's one of the best ways to do it. And then just pick one and get started, and, and you'll you'll find pretty quickly that you're going to get a lot of encouragement. Be ready to get some negative reaction too, but that's okay. I mean, that's that's what we're here for is to be able to interact with those people who maybe are questioning you. Well, then be open, honest, and transparent with them. And whether they will agree with you or not – you will have had an impact, in my opinion. You may not be able to measure that exactly, but that I, I really believe the benefits we are going to see are, are going to be there long term. Charlene, it may be too much to ask that uh, a network anchor or some writer for a major magazine will always try to be fair and give a balanced story. It seems like a lot of that's gone by the wayside, unfortunately, anymore in today's society. But if we can inform the public to the point where they see something and they'll then follow up with a question, now, is that really the case or is there more to this? And I've heard that the the farmer says this is why he does a certain thing. If we can educate them to that point that they'll ask those questions, then we've made a lot of progress. I think that's very true. And I'm going to start with a little quick thing is for farmers, this is a perfect time to get engaged because obviously talking print media, there's turkeys going to be hitting some tables in about a week. Christmas trees are being cut. There are through the seasons, there's always a great opportunity to tell ag story, and farmers need to take advantage of that willingness to to show that. But I think farmers need to, in addition to being engaged in your traditional ag organizations, get engaged in that conversation and other organizations, whether it is, for example, I'm a Grange member where it's agriculture and the rural communities. If you can start making consumers to be your advocate that is a very powerful thing because we need we need consumers to advocate for the agriculture in today's society and to start bringing those questions to the to the forefront because as reporters we if if we get those follow up questions we are going to follow up I want to thank our panel Charlene Shoup Espenshade Chuck Zimmerman Chris Pierce Gene Minipace we are out of time thanks again to all of our sponsors the Soybean Checkoff New Holland Agriculture and the American Farm Bureau Thank you for joining us for our National Farm City Council Symposium here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Agriculture, a growing story. We're going to hear from a a local TV news anchor at our luncheon. We're looking forward to that. Thank you for joining us on AgriTalk.